joined now by former APC governorship candidate in River State, Tonya Cole. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Always good. Well, uh, if there's anything people are excited about is um, ensuring our democracy is uh, better, which you did by following the process till this day. Uh, first, uh, let us in on... I don't want to use the word the journey. Uh, that would take it, it was a journey. <laughs> it <laughs> was a journey. An odyssey. <laughs> a real odyssey. So, 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 so uh, <coughs> how fast did you go through all of this till this moment? Because you had a belief, and that belief, uh, is it still with you? Absolutely. You know, coming into politics, a lot of people thought that it was just uh, a hobby, a pastime, something that you just do and run away. But I remember right back in 2018, before making this decision, I had to face three very key things. The first was that, was my life worth it? Because I was going into a state where everybody back then was absolutely afraid that if you went in, then you could die. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the first things that I had to do. The second thing was something my father said to me, politics is not half and half. You put your leg in, you stay. So you must decide whether you are going to be in or out. On that day, I gave 20 years to this journey. So it's not an in and or out thing. On that day, I said I was going to do this for 20 years. Then the third thing was that how much are you willing to spend in this? Because politics is expensive. So if you're not willing to spend and ensure that you still have enough to survive, then don't go. Because if you spend everything and then you're hungry, then you're likely to steal. So what are you going to do? Right. And so these were three important things that I had to think about. And I'm grateful. It's been a very interesting journey because I've had to balance all three at each point of this journey. Let's get your thoughts on the Supreme Court ruling. I mean, it didn't go in your favor. You, you were quoted as saying it's the will of God. And I'm tempted to ask, would you run again? And then secondly, mm. secondly, secondly, <laughs> secondly, um, do you think politics in Nigeria is ready for people like yourself, you know, who want to be decent, who want to be clean, who truly have something to bring uh, to the table, that not the politics of the end justifies the means? So I think I've proven uh, this time around that being in politics with a different message and a different approach works. And why that works? You see, winning is not what it is all about. In other words, you're winning being made a governor and all of that. Yes, it's a good part of it, but it's not the end of the journey. The number of people who have just come up to me, even today, just to say thank you for the type of politics that you have run, tells me that we're making a difference. In other words, we're appealing to a totally different type of Nigerian political mind that has been yearning for something different. And so we're building a movement, and believe me, that movement is going to become a tsunami soon. Why? Because you have a larger percentage of people who have been yearning and looking for something different. And I think we bring that option onto the table, a different type of politics, a different type of politician. Are we politicians? Absolutely, because we do politics, but we're bringing a different type of politician. And so for me, that's where we are. In terms of running again, I've run twice now. Okay. What happens in 2027 is another journey, a totally different journey. It starts immediately. Mm -hmm. And so we begin to work on how we're going to do that. And then when we get there, we cross that bridge. But what we're certain about is that we're not going anywhere. Like I said, I'm here for the next 20 years, at least till 2038 mm -hmm. or 2039. You know, earlier, uh, myself, uh, uh, before we came on live, my Ngozi uh, were talking about, uh, for those who are, who are lovers of the Bible, uh, why people choose <laughs> Barnabas uh, instead of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying to wrap my mind around that. And I said they chose Barnabas because uh, uh, there was no self-examination, no repentance, no act of mercy or forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus, on the other hand, made uh, the folks uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Is that what we have in our politics today? Because mm -hmm. it seems that uh, there's some certain traits in some people that do doesn't cut it. You know, one of the things I saw in politics <coughs> was the weaponization of poverty. Okay. Now, as long as poverty is weaponized and people find themselves in a very bad state, then they would always go for the option that has to do with giving them money, doing things. Now, maybe Barnabas as a thief was a Robin Hood. Who knows? 
Maybe he used to steal from, steal the, from rich the rich to and to give the to the poor. Maybe that's what he was doing. But you had a lot of poor people in Israel at that time. Remember that they were under the occupation of the Romans at the time. So you are seeing a very similar thing in Nigeria today. A lot of poor people that you can buy off any time at elections. And so the ability to rationalize at an election, on election day, between my stomach and my future, most people will select their, their stomach. And that's mm. what we see today. Right, let's talk about uh, River State. Yes, uh, the Supreme Court ruling didn't go uh, in your favor. And you, how, are you going to work with uh, Fubara? Are you willing to work with him? In what uh, capacity would that be? Considering, again, uh, what some might call the specter of the wiki factor. I mean, he, he <laughs> says, that's Fubara, says wiki is his ogre. So, I mean, paint a picture of what, okay. how... You know, it's, it's, it's a good question. Mm. And when I think about River State, uh, one of the things that saddens me the most <coughs> is that I grew up both in Rivers and in Lagos, and I know both very well. And I know a time when we used to compete by, side by side. Now, in the last 25 years, what I have seen is River State go down and Lagos go up. And I ask the question, why? And mm. almost always you can point it to political issues. Godfather fights with Godson, Godfather fights with Godson. One is just being consistent. As one governor goes, the next governor is fighting. Something has to break and something has mm. to give. And I have also seen in reverse politics that there was such a bitterness that if you are with this faction, you can't talk with that faction. If you are on this side, you cannot. And you are leaving a lot of good people aside because you would find good people on either side. Right. So one of the politics that I decided to bring into River State this time was that I was going to reach across the aisle as often as possible and just begin to break this whole thing about if you are APC, don't talk to PDP. If you are this party, don't. Talk. If you are with this personality, mm -hmm. don't talk to that personality. And I think most reverse people and reverse politicians can attest to the fact that I was able to break that. And so reaching out to Governor Fubera is saying to him that, look, not only do I have a lot to offer, that's up to you, so it's up to him to decide, but that there are many people I know who are on my side that have a lot to offer. And if you want us to develop this state together, then let us do so. But if you choose to leave us aside, we will survive. Another four, four years just comes and goes. Right. We will survive. But that will not be the best for River State. But again, if you look at it, one other key concern, you had raised it uh, mm -hmm. earlier after the uh, inauguration of uh, President uh, Tinubu, is uh, it would seem as if your party, uh, you know, the PDP stole the thunder uh, of your party in River State. Uh, appointments uh, that should come to some people who fought for the party, who worked for mm -hmm. the party, hasn't gone the way of the APC uh, lately, owing to the fact that uh, the president uh, has a kind of politics with uh, Wiki, uh, who's the FCT minister, is something that uh, many are still trying to study. <laughs> yes, and, and I, I've always said that I did not think that overall that that policy is right because it deepens divisions. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I said, the president has always had the prerogative to appoint. And in the first instance, you want to make good to those who you believe have worked with you. And so we never had a problem with the first one, second one. I never had a problem with him, with Wiki becoming a minister. So the first, second, third, fourth. Then at some point, you now sit down and as president or leaders of the nation, you now start sitting there, how do we reconcile others? Mm -hmm. And so at that point, even if you are giving four to one and giving one to another, you are saying to both sides of the party that, I understand that you have value. Now, you may not have been on my side now, but you have value, so bring it. Or I don't believe that you are working with me, but this is how we can work together. And I think that that is a better way. Total exclusion. Politics where it's everything must come to me and me alone can never be good for democracy, mm. can never be good for Nigeria. So in you, in yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, apologies. Yeah. So in other words, what's the state of your party in yes. Rivers at the moment? So right now, what APC, what, in fact, we don't know whether Wiki is coming to APC or not. Mm. There are two, and it's a division that I'm not happy with because we have two APCs. We have the one that is recognized by the party, which is a Mika Beke, that's the one that, by the law, 
So Emeka Beke, by the law, is the chairman of APC. Now, for some reason, a caretaker APC has been uh, brought about. Now, caretaker APC, real APC, we're back to the division of APC University. We don't need it. So I think at this point, we finished the, all the uh, Supreme Court. The, that election process is done. Mm -hmm. As the leader of APC, what I would expect at this point is that we would get a call from the president, the caretaker, everybody, come, let's sit down now. We need one APC and we need to work together. How do we do that? And that is the way we should go at this point. Do you think the wicked factor robbed you of the chance of becoming the governor of River State, of winning that election, considering that River State clearly voted you know, for the APC in the presidential election, but at the state level? <laughs> I, think, I think that was, that's pretty obvious, okay, what we saw it was live, everybody saw it and all of that. And so the election itself and how the results came out are two different things. But that's opening old wounds. It's, it's past. We will move on. We can't do anything about it. So we took it to court and the court has determined the outcome of it. We'll leave to fight another day. That's no problem there. Going forward, I mean, River State under Fubara, uh, you know, just like you said, time moves so swiftly. Mm. Four years will come and come go and like, go. you know, like smoke. What's your vision? What are you hoping for River State, both in terms of reconciliation of all the, you know, parties like you've mentioned, but more importantly, developmental uh, strides. Okay. It's an oil rich state. I agree. And all of that. I agree. River, River State has huge potential, so we know. Mm -hmm. River State is divided politically, we see that. But most importantly, what we need in River State is we don't have a consistent development plan. Okay? So each government comes and totally discards what the last has done. It doesn't matter how many billions we have spent. You throw it away and you start again. That must not continue. So one of the first things that I would expect Governor Fubra to do at this point is call the key stakeholders, regardless of which party you are in, regardless whether it's Labour, Accord and all, Call them together and say, look, you're all stakeholders in this. We need to develop, we need to put together a development plan yeah. that would outlive me and outlive you. Mm -hmm. Now, let River State agree that this will be the path that we're going to take to development for the next 30 years, 40 years. And whichever government is in, these are key things that we would follow. Let us all agree. And I think if we can do that, then you will see development that would outlive all of us, whether it's APC in power today, PDP in power today, mm. me or him. That's what he needs to start to do. So the reconciliation is important, but I think he needs to go beyond ethnicity, beyond religion, beyond party, and call everyone together. So last 24 years, you we know, have no progress. Sorry to put in very, very quickly mm. before we, we wrap this. Uh, earlier, you made the point that you're not even sure, and it's not clear exactly uh, which party, AP, um, <laughs> yes, on Wiki, the FCT minister belongs to, whether it's in the APC or, or the PDP. Or PDP but imagine a situation where uh, he is actually in the APC. Would you be glad to have him? Don't or, have, there, there's um, no, look, there's no, there's no problem with that. But make a decision. Mm -hmm. Come in and say, I mean, but you cannot be in EPC and PDP and causing confusion in both places. Either you come to EPC and then we sit down and work out how EPC works, or you're in PDP and we work out how we collaborate or work together or stand in opposition or whatever it is. But I think the point has come now where the FCT minister must make a stand. Am I in APC or am I in PDP? But this APC, PDP, PDP, APC thing, I think it needs to end. We'll have to say thank you very much. It's been nice having you on Newsnight tonight. Toya Cole. Uh